everyone, it's Maggie here with NetSupport and another one of our NetSupport Insights. I'm glad to bring you one of my good friends here, Chloe from Project Unicorn, to tell us a little about what they're doing and how it can impact your school district for the better. So Chloe, tell us who you are and a little bit more about your mission at Project Unicorn. Yeah, hey everyone, I'm Chloe Sanducci. I'm the project director for Project Unicorn. And at Project Unicorn, we are a project under the nonprofit Innovate EDU. Um, and our mission is all around data interoperability. So we're here to uh, make an effort and a push towards K-12 interoperability being solved um, in education specifically. And we support a standards-aligned ecosystem. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But uh, what we're doing here is we're bringing together innovators from school districts as well as vendors, just like uh, Classroom.Cloud. And we'll talk about them as well and <laughs> that support and what they did with their certification in a moment. But we're bringing everyone together as a community to get resources out there. We do publications, we do webinars, everything is free because we're a fully funded nonprofit. Um, and we're trying to make a case for interoperability. And do you know the definition of interoperability, Maggie? I am, I think a lot of people don't. And I will, I will admit, I had to look it up myself at yes. first. I was like, what is all this? So make it plain and simple for us. Yeah, Chloe. definitely. So interoperability, this really big word is the seamless, secure, and controlled exchange of data between applications. So let's think of this in everyday life. Um, one example is Bluetooth, right? Bluetooth, that is an interoperable system in our everyday life. You can connect your phone, right, to your headphones, to your laptop, to your computer, iPad, whatever, and we always use Bluetooth. And that is because everyone has put this in the Bluetooth technical standard, therefore it's interoperable. So when we bring this to education, we're thinking about how do all of these apps, all of these ed tech applications and tools that we use, how can they connect and share information so that we can actually make data-driven decisions? That's what we're doing here. That's awesome. So you're talking about things like you've got your LMS, your SIS, you've got your apps that you use, and we want them all to communicate seamlessly so it's a lot easier for the districts to utilize them and have that even share of information, but also secure share of information so that our students and our teachers remain protected. Is that correct? Exactly, yeah. So not only is it just efficient for us to bring this data together, but it does take in that component of security, safety, privacy, which is on everyone's minds. Awesome. So interoperability is probably going to be a new term for everybody, but what you're trying to achieve isn't all that new. So why should districts, why should teachers, why should everyone really care about data interoperability and prioritize this as part of their mission? Yeah, well, so again, going back to that security, and well, we can take a step back actually and think about Without interoperability, we have manual processes happening. So now we're talking about giving teachers and admin time back to focus on what's important, their instruction on the students, not having to grab spreadsheets and put them together and make decisions. Um, so that is one aspect of it. And then when we think about that privacy aspect, that security aspect, having students logging in, creating usernames here and there, that is not secure and it's almost going to eventually that it could be an issue out of school district and for the vendor as well. So for both parties, they need to think about how can they make these systems easy, seamless workflows so that we have that security aspect and the efficiency with the jobs that we're trying to do. That's awesome. So one of the ways that you're doing this is you actually have a vendor certification that enables us as vendors to actually go out there and make sure that we're aligning with those standards. Um, so we just went through that and that's where we got our tier four certification Woo! for Classroom Cloud. But tell everybody if they were on the vendor side, what does that process look like yeah. and why really, why should they be doing this? Why is it a big deal to get this done? Definitely. So we uh, came up with at Project Unicorn and, and one thing I didn't mention before, so Project Unicorn, yes, it's facilitated by me and the team at Project Unicorn, but what it is is that community. So it's made up of vendors just like NetSupport and Classroom Cloud and a bunch of other vendors, a bunch of school districts are pledged signatories who have said we are pledging to make our products interoperable and go on our journey. So we have that. And then we're also made up of a, a technical advisory committee, a K-12 advisory board, and a steering committee of organizations that are coming together. And in some cases, they're often competing, right, in the market or in just what they're trying to do, but they've come together to say that we think this is important, we're signing off on this mission and everything that comes out of it. So a product that did come out of this was a rubric. It's an interoperability rubric. And this rubric states, if you uh, are able to get the highest tier, a tier four, or even a tier three, which is also 
very high, then you are an interoperable product. So the way this can be used by school districts, written in RFPs, uh, asking the vendors, please make sure that you uh, use the rubric or that you are certified by Project Unicorn. And then the vendors, same thing, vetting your project or your product, thinking about where do we sit on this rubric? And then when you're ready, doing the certification, just like Classroom Cloud did. And from there, there's a couple different ways that you'll have visibility. It goes on the EdSearch product index, which many of us heard about today or during this conference made by ISTE and EdSearch. It also goes on the Learn platform. And there's other ways that we try to elevate all of our vendors who do get certified. That's awesome. And we've already benefited from that. And we love being able to tell our school districts, hey, when you get Classroom Cloud, you can be sure that this is going to work seamlessly with the other systems that you have. So then that's removed from them. And they're not having to be concerned about that. But you made a really good point about how districts can use this for when they're doing their RFPs, when they're planning for products. Because a lot of times they're not sure of what questions to ask, but they know that they need it to work seamlessly with certain platforms. So by being able to say, hey, double check for either matching these standards or having a certification, that's gonna be one more tick in the box. It's gonna save them a whole lot of time in that process as yep, well. Exactly. And if you may or may not know, Maggie just mentioned the standards and I said this before. So again, we support a standards line ecosystem. The four major standards being CEDS, EdFi Alliance, One EdTech, and A4L, the Access for Learning community, who also have the Student Data Privacy Consortium, which is a great uh, thing to look at, look at all these things. Uh, so thinking about those, thinking about what are these data standards, you can get all this information from Project Unicorn. We'll give you that baseline, and then we can get you out to our network and connect you with the different people who are already doing the thing that you're looking to do. For example, if a vendor came to us and they're looking to do something that Classroom Cloud is doing, we'll connect them, and that's what this community and the same thing with a school district. When I speak with a school district who's trying to make a product and I've already spoken to another school district, they're doing it, they're more advanced, or maybe they're at the same point. We'll put them together as long as they're okay with that. They wanna be connected to figure out and learn from each other. Awesome, so it's about that collaboration, learning from one another. It's not just a hey, tick the boxes and you're done. It's really a community and yep. ecosystem that we're trying to build here with Project Unicorn, yeah. which is super awesome. So if I'm a district, if I'm a school and I wanna get involved, what should I do next with Project Unicorn? How do I yeah, plug in? Definitely. So the first thing I would do is go to our website, www.projectunicorn.org. And from there, there's many ways to get involved. Uh, there'll be a button on the bottom that says to join our newsletter. You can get our uh, new our webinars and we'll, we'll email you a couple times. But the best way is to actually be a pledge signatory. So this is something where you are pledging, you are saying as a either a vendor or a school district, that we are committed to making our products interoperable or going on our interoperability journey if you're a school district and you're pledging to that. When you're a pledge signatory, you're becoming part of this community. We have a space on Slack for our signatories to collaborate and to talk to each other. We do sometimes invite only webinars for our uh, signatories and get information that they may not have gotten if you know they weren't part of a member organization. Um, and there's a whole slew of other ways that we help and we assist our signatories and try to build that community. So that would be the next step. And then lastly, just as Maggie said, I would do the certification if you are a school, uh, if you're a vendor or if you're a school district, you can start asking, start thinking about this rubric, check out the rubric and ask your vendors, do you comply with this rubric? Where do you sit on this rubric? And can you, you know, sign the pledge for Project Unicorn as well as do the certification? Um, that would be some of the ways. And again, sign up for our newsletter. We just do webinars all the time. We have publications. So that's the very least to start and get all these free resources. That's awesome. And I will also do a plug for your Twitter because I know I regularly see all the postings about the webinars and things that are popping up. It's very frequent, which is awesome. I've learned some things coming off of them. Like, ah, new things I didn't know. So yes. your Twitter handle is at Project Unicorn. I think it, I believe it's Proj Unicorn. Proj Unicorn, that's right. Okay. P-R-O-J. Unicorn. Unicorn. Yes. I always, it's so hard. I'm like, oh, there's so many yes, Twitter handles. Yes. Different. But if you're into the Twitter, as they, you know, as the, the kids say, into the Twitter, uh, <laughs> then go find them on there. You can stay up to date on everything that's going on. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on here. Thanks for sharing a lot about yeah. what's been going on with Project Unicorn, interoperability, and of course, prioritizing that seamless, um, controlled communication of data so that we can make a better ecosystem for our students and for our schools. Yeah. So, thanks, Maggie. Any last minute insights or things you want to share with us about, about the world of ed tech? If you get involved with Project Unicorn, we have a lot of really cool unicorn swag, like t-shirts that say Unicorn Believer. 
um, because we do data magic here. There you go. Well, all right, I'm gonna go get myself a nice Project Unicorn shirt. You'll see that on me later on. Uh, and thanks so much, Chloe, for being with us today. Thanks, I appreciate Maggie. it. Thanks for having me. Thank you.